Here are five things you're gonna wanna know about the Westman Atelier Lip Suede before you buy it. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, and you are here because you're looking for some cleaner lip color or specifically at this $85 Westman Atelier Lip Suede and you kinda wanna know if it's worth it, right? Right, got it. So here are the five things that I'm gonna cover today, the five things I think you may wanna know before you buy it. They're all based on my scorecard system. This keeps everything super objective over here and you're gonna hear my honest opinion as always at the end with the final verdict would I buy it again and if not what are the other lip products that I would recommend links to everything I mentioned will be below this is gonna be my 622nd or 23rd product review over here whoa only 30 out of the hundreds that I've reviewed make it into the Brits picks favorites list back on the site let's see if this one's gonna make the cut for me and if it's a fit for you so first thing you might want to know about is the ingredients especially if you're over here and cleaning up your routine that's probably one of your top questions the ingredients here looked great there were no red flags for me check out the disclaimer on the screen they talk about the fact that this has 16.5 percent cold pressed cherry oil and then you look at the list and you see that high on the list these types of things when they claim these things and then they're up high on the list they make me very happy. There are some colorants in here, so if you're an avid EWG person, you're gonna see some higher ratings there. Check out the list for yourself. What works for some may not work for others. Next, how, how does this thing apply? Especially because this is a little bit different. You don't see a lot of lip color palettes out there. I personally think the palette is kind of genius. I love the concept of it. Now, in terms of actually using it, a little bit different. You can use your finger or you can use a brush. I'll tell you why I actually prefer using the finger but eventually think I'm gonna have to use a brush. When you press your finger to the color, it will warm to the touch. It's still kind of like a putty, so there's a little bit of pull and density there. Not too bad, it definitely gets onto your finger and then I can press that on top of my lips. There are the four shades in here, so sometimes your finger is gonna, depending on the size of your fingers, because if you have very small fingers, this could be very easy for you, but I'm thinking of people who have bigger fingers. This is like a nightmare. <laughs> you're gonna have to use a brush. The brush also has an advantage because you're not dunking your hand into this over and over again and potentially just putting bacteria. However, if you wanna bring a brush with you, God knows, I've, if I put anything in my bag, it vanishes. I don't know where it goes. It's like where the other sock goes in the dryer. I don't know. I don't know where all these things live. It's not the end of the world. I like the concept. I just found application to be tricky in terms of what was happening with the palette. Once it got onto my lips, very easy, a little bit went a long way, and the pigment, boom, paid off instantly. So I rate everything on my scorecard here out of five. It got a three out of five on the scorecard. Next up, like I already mentioned, that payoff, and you can see it in the demo, that payoff is strong. It will be even stronger and more precise with a brush. Five out of five, these pigments are pigmented. They are super duper saturated, and that thickness, that putty, really helps it apply to the lips. It's not like a sheer moment with these colors. I have to talk about scent because some people have things with scent. I'm one of them. Sometimes if I get a lip gloss and it's too scented, I can actually taste it in the back of my throat. It kind of makes me cough, it drives me nuts. This has pretty much no scent. It's a very neutral scent. You really can't even smell anything. So it got a five out of five on the scorecard there. It's not overwhelming, don't worry about it. And now for the wear test. Some of this has to do with application. I primarily used my finger. I think if I had used a brush, it would have been maybe a little better. The wear test was really good to a degree. I think it got to eight hours and I can show you what it looked like after. You could kind of see, the it looked like a lip stain was still there, but it was more around the outer edges of my lips, which is obviously not good. So I was about to reach for a balm. Check out the video. Right, the wear test for Westman Atelier, I was just about to put a balm on because my mouth is very dry. I wouldn't say it was drying, but you can see it's just sort of worn off. Looks a little weird. So hence me wanting to put balm on, but I thought I would hop on here first, show you what the wear test looks like. This is about eight hours, actually, almost to the minute. This is eight hours, so it held on. It's not like the best. Of course, I did it pretty quickly, so the type of application or the method matters. I would say the pigment still stood out, it held on. It just wasn't the best wear test I've ever had. That's all. There you go for the wear test. Overall, got a three out of five on the scorecard. Not great, but not horrible. I do also wanna talk about two things. I know I said five, but there's two more things that are kind of important. This packaging, it is very heavy and pretty lovely. I, I'm shocked 
there's not a refill available. If there was a refill available, this could be way more approachable to people, I think. So I don't know, Gucci Westman, if you want to hear me out, probably not. But maybe you're working on it. I don't know. I didn't see that option online. So correct me if I'm mistaken, team, but that just doesn't make this sustainable for me. The other thing is the shade inclusivity. I think these are, they're supposed to be universal. I think they can be. There's such strong pigment and payoff here and you can play with it. So you can add more, you can combine colors. I feel like it's one of the most universal lip products I've seen. Final score here was a 16 out of 20. So those are the five things that I wanted you to know before you buy it. Now it's time for my final verdict. This is the big one. Would I buy it again? I know I talked about the $85 price point being high. I also have to consider that there are four shades in here. Are they as much product as I would get in a full lipstick? I don't think so. But if we just, if we were on that line of thinking and you could make multiple colors, which you can do the same thing with a lipstick, but it's all in one palette, then it would work out to be about 20 bucks per color, which again, I don't feel like the value is there because I'm not sure about the amount. I haven't asked the brand about that. So it's, it's a high price point. I can see how they want to validate the price point due to having four shades in there that can be mixed over and over again to make countless shades. For me, it was less about that. It was more about the application and how tricky it became with my finger and how this palette is starting to look like a hot mess. So then I would want to use the brush, but I don't actually like using a brush. So for me, it just kind of created more complications. It's totally personal. It's just a personal vibe. I'm not a huge fan of that. I loved the warm dusty rose shade. I fell in love with it. Not enough to buy the whole palette again to get that dusty rose shade though. So it's a no for me. Instead, I really reach for my 100% pure matte lipsticks. They're fruit pigmented. They're incredible payoff. I have a full stick. They're up there in price point. So if you got four of those, it would be more expensive than if you got this one palette. It's just how you want to look at it or what you like or how you like to apply or if you like having all the colors. But for me, I really love those 100% pure lipsticks. And I also happen to love the Red Apple Girls lipsticks. They're less um, dense. The shade range is beautiful, but they're not as saturated and matte. They've got a little bit more butteriness to them, so they're kind of more moisturizing. And there's plenty more back on the channel, and then you can check out Brit's Fix. But for me, it's gonna be a pass. Also, the packaging, I need refills to even consider it at this point, and those aren't there. But I feel like this really lends itself to having a refill available. You should just call Kira Weiss and see what they're doing and then like have a powwow behind the scenes and then come out with your luxurious equivalent to that. Cause Kira Weiss is luxury beauty, right? So like, I feel like you guys would get along. You guys have probably already talked. Who am I talking to? I really kind of just now want to take my lip colors and make my own palette. That's kind of what I want to do and do it in like a four up container. I think I'm going to do that and see how it goes. I don't know. Maybe one Sunday we'll find out. So that's what the scorecard says. That's my opinion. What do you think? Would you spend over $80 on a lip palette? I'm not against it, but I'm just curious. What would you do? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I have new reviews coming out weekly and I'm gonna go put all this away and try some more. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then, bye.